It's a peaceful scene, one you might expect to find many miles from civilization. But these grey-headed flying foxes are waiting out the daylight hours, grooming and breeding in the suburb of Gordon at Kuringai Flying Fox Reserve, one of six colony sites in the Greater Sydney area. They've been attracted to the forested ravine for years, but it wasn't until 1983 that public pressure led to council purchasing two parcels of land to be dedicated to flying fox conservation. Two years later saw the formation of what is now known as the Kuringai Bat Conservation Society, or KBCS. So we do education, we encourage bat research, and of course we maintain the bush, uh, do bush regen down here to protect the site for the bats. And that means getting their hands dirty. While it may look exotic and healthy, many of the reserve's native trees are being choked by these invasive weeds, leaving little habitat for grey-headed flying foxes, which were listed by the Australian government as a threatened species in 2001. The KBCS has spent many hours, days and even years clearing these weeds and is now in the process of replanting suitable habitat. Every time we plant a tree, the swamp wallabies chew them all up. So we've made these wonderful swamp wallaby cage protectors and uh, we're putting them up. Mina Basarova works for the Threatened Species Network, a partnership between WWF Australia and the Australian Government. She has a keen interest in the grey-headed flying fox, giving public talks using non-releasable hand-raised bats such as Molly to demonstrate the species' social nature. She also oversees the use of grant funds that the Threatened Species Network awarded to the KBCS for flying fox conservation. We're concerned because, and the reason they were listed is that the decline in their population has been very rapid. In, in about a 10 year period, their population dropped 30%. Once numbering in their millions in Australia, the population has since plummeted to less than 400,000. Those are generally found travelling up and down the east coast between southern Queensland and Melbourne. Following the flowering of native eucalypts, banksias and rainforest trees, which serve as their main source of food. So what exactly have the funds enabled the group to do? Uh, the grant has enabled us to buy, purchase the material to put up 200 swamp wallaby protection cages. So we're going through and planting in the open gap in the canopy and restoring hopefully suitable trees for the bats to roost into the future. It's the loss of this kind of habitat for roosting and feeding that's thought to be the main reason for their demise. But that's not the only injustice these peaceful creatures face. Urban conflict and even electrocution in developed areas add to their tale of woe. And this has highlighted an urgent need for further research into preferred habitats for the species. The Threatened Species Network grant is contributing to just that in the form of a Macquarie University honours thesis. We've got data luggers and they're the size of a $2 coin and we place them up in trees and they measure both temperature and relative humidity um, every two hours. The research aims to reveal what ideal conditions are for flying foxes so areas that are found to be suitable can then be preserved. The first season of research is now complete and it's hoped it will continue over a three-year period producing baseline data to help shape future conservation plans. But for now, the colony site at Kuringai is safe and in good hands, thanks to the volunteers of the KBCS and to the Kuringai Council, with the generous support from the Threatened Species Network.